good morning everyone from beautiful Ubud in Bali. Now, today we're at the Tegalalang Rice Terrace. You can see it right behind me here and it's bright and early and it's just a magnificent sight right now. Just look at this beauty behind me. We're gonna go check it out. We're gonna walk down and just take a look around and uh, just see what there is to do here. But you can come here, you can uh, snap a couple of pictures, you can go trekking uh, around and it's just honestly, it's magical. So let's go check it out right now. So one thing I can definitely say, is this is definitely not stroller friendly. Hey, be careful there. The steps are steep here, so you have to watch where you're going at all times. Yeah, just be careful. I think the rice is kind of all harvested, so uh, you don't really get to see any rice. It's all just water right now. So that is just a slight bummer, but it's still absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's a beautiful place to come for a trek, or a hike, I should say, and, and go around. Of course, it's a little harder for us. We didn't bring, actually, we did bring our baby wares, but we left them in the car. Um, you just have to really watch your kids here because every step is a steep step, but it's gorgeous, man. Look at that. Just beautiful. I gotta say that was a steeper hike than I expected it to be. It's actually quite intense if you're gonna get a workout if you're going all around the rice field here, I gotta say, so. <sighs> I feel like I'm about to puke. That was a pretty intense workout, right? I need a nap in the car. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next stop is Terta Empol. This is the Holy Spring. So this is a really popular spot here. This place is filled with history and uh, religious rituals. Supposedly, it has been here since the 10th century. So it's been around for a while. At least one of the temples in there has been around since the 10th century. So we got our tickets. It's 50,000 per grown-up, 25,000 per kids. And if your kids are under a certain age, I forget the age, they're free. So we got two free kids, one kid ticket, and two grown-ups for 125,000 Indonesian rupiah. So about $10 US or so for entrance here. So first things first, it's prohibited to enter the premises without proper dress. So you stop right here and you get a sarong, you're just gonna wrap it around yourself and then you're properly dressed and ready to go in. So before you dip in, you generally have to provide an offering. So usually this is what you do right here. So you have your ba offering basket and you have to provide that. And your mind has to be pure before you go in it. So you have to want that positivity. You have to want to cleanse yourself before you actually go ahead and do it. There is a garb that you wear if you want to go inside. I don't have it on, so I'm not going to go inside the water. I'm just going to take a little bit of the holy water from the outside and just sprinkle it on my head. Right over 
river there, that's where the holy spring water just comes up and it just springs out. And you can see it just looks like a, it looks like there's a hundred fish that are kind of swimming underneath the sand or the, the rocks there, but it's actually just the water that's coming up. So that's the source right there. So we made our way to Panglipuran village. This is a traditional authentic Balinese village. So right here there are no cars you're gonna see. This is just a small little village. So basically what a traditional village would have looked like uh, if you know there was no cars or none of this modern stuff so to speak. So uh, this is very cool and you can just hear that it's kind of quiet. There's not an overload of people. Actually there are some tourists. I just see them right here but it's quieter than the other size that we have seen so far for sure. just your typical roosters these are cockfighting roosters so I think we kind of just accidentally stumbled upon a cockfighting ring here now as I've been told cockfighting not really legal here in Indonesia so but still very popular so I don't know what we do about this whole thing but yeah anyways cute little roosters here as uh, we stopped at this place to get some snacks. Every house here is kind of open. You can go in, you can walk around, you can explore, just check out the house and everything. And the counter side to that is that this village has kind of been turned into a tourist village. So uh, most houses here have stuff that they can sell you, uh, kind of like touristy things. Some places like the one we went to is just like a light snack or kind of like a restaurant actually. We had some noodles and we had some gado gado so you can sit down and you can have a bite to eat. But that is basically the counter to everything. On one hand you can go in you can look around, you're not really rushed or stressed or anything like that. On the other hand, most of these houses make their living by selling touristy things. So maybe on one hand it kind of ruins a little bit of that authenticity, but you kind of get the first part, a nice clean village that's really neatly upkept as a result of the second. So a little bit of both here. Gurung Kawi. Now this place is a temple complex and uh, it has some rice fields that we just saw as well now. It just feels like as you're walking into it, I just have to watch my step here, but as you're walking into it, it feels like you just keep going down and down and down and down like in an endless kind of maze of stairs and souvenir shops and uh, it takes a while before you really see anything resembling a, a very beautiful site. So, so I have to say beware because there's gonna be a lot of steps as you're coming here. I forget how many, there's a couple of hundred of steps. So it's actually not that bad going down, but when you're gonna go back up, that's when it's gonna hit you. It's definitely gonna hit me. So lots of steps here.
So we made it what felt like an infinity amount of steps going down, but we finally made it. So behind me is Gunung Kawi. So this is this is a temple, right? It's a temple, yeah. It's a temple, but it's actually a carving as yeah. well, right? So it's like a temple and a carving. It's also a place of worship, but you can just see it behind me. It's absolutely stunning. This is well worth the trek down and the trek back up as you're going to make your way back up hundreds of stairs. But just look at this. This is outstanding. It's so beautiful. And it's sculpted inside the rock. Wow. So this was made by? By the king of Udayana. King of, yeah, King of Udayana. So in about the 11th century. 11th century, yeah. Around the 11th century. So this is really old. That's 11th century. That was like then 1,000 something something, right? So that's really, really old, over 1,000 years old. How many stairs are there? Uh, in this, uh, 325. 325 stairs all around? All around, down and up. Down? <laughs> down. And I'm not looking forward to the up. But the views here are unbelievable. Some of the best views that I have ever seen, ever. It's just completely breathtaking. And you can totally see why this place is also a place for meditation where people come, they meditate, because it just feels like this very peaceful, very natural place. This is also Gunung Kawe, just the other side of the river here on the other side of the bridge. So they have five stone carvings, uh, I guess is what you call them over here. So uh, it's just a part of the same complex just on the other side. Absolutely stunningly beautiful, really. This is quite a treat. And you can see just how old it looks and the building is has that kind of faded rock look to it with that kind of moss on top that just looks so old. and. You can just tell that this is a really old building. You see the stairs, the stairs are just so small. The rock is kind of black in some areas. So obviously this is very, very old, dating back to the 11th century, I believe. So it's been here for quite some time. Just what a sight to see and to be able to get up close. All right guys, so we're starting to make the trek back up. 320 something, sorry, I forget exactly the number. Through over 300 stairs. This is not going to be fun, I know that. Here we go, let's do it. Whew. It's only fifth or sixth step, out of breath. Yeah, only fifth or sixth, yeah. There's 320 something steps, hello. <laughs> That's what it looks like going back up. You think that looks fun? Huh. Try putting this on you. <laughs> she doesn't mind though, right? You don't mind. <laughs> but it's all about pacing yourself and also about not talking to the camera. So I'll talk to you guys once I get up. I think that's gonna do it for today. That was a crazy tour of Ubud, we topped it off with a pretty intense hike. So I can feel that in every part of my body, even parts that I didn't know I had before. So that's gonna do it for us guys. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up for more content from us, from the GoTo family here in Bali and from around the world. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell for the notifications. All right, I'm out of breath guys. I'll see you on the next video.